In an earlier video, we looked at equilibrium crystallization. Here, we're going to look at a case of fractional crystallization. So when we talk about fractional crystallization, uh, we use this term very generally, but uh, what we really mean is a very specific kind of process where crystals, will, uh, where I will just abbreviate that as XTLS, are removed from the liquid in which they are forming as soon as they are formed. So if we have a big batch of liquid here, so let's say this is a bunch of liquid, uh, silicate liquid that's swirling around, as soon as we take uh, that liquid and cool it and make some crystals, as soon as we have the tiniest little bit of crystalline material, uh, we pull it out of circulation. We can have them segregate here on the bottom, but uh, segregated in a way so they're no longer, no longer uh, chemically communicating with uh, the liquid so that they no longer equilibrate or we can pull them out of the system together. It really doesn't matter uh, by what physical process we do it. So long as the crystals are separated, removed from the liquid as soon as they're created. And we don't even wait for them to grow to any measurable size. As soon as we make the tiniest little bit of solid material, that material is gone. And that has kind of a special meaning when we go to the phase diagram that we have here. So let's say we have something that is 40% phthalate and that bulk composition is completely liquid. So that means it is, that it has a temperature that's up here somewhere, let's put it somewhere well above 1890. So the whole thing is liquid. As it cools and begins to crystallize, the first crystals will form here at a temperature of about 1800 degrees. And those temperatures will have a composition of, oh, it looks like about FO95, uh, FA5. So about 5% phthalate, 95% forced, forced rate. In the case of equilibrium crystallization, which we showed in another diagram, the liquids will evolve down this liquidus curve and the solids will do the same. So at some later point after a period of cooling, let's say at 1700 degrees, we might have a composition, a liquid composition that's here at um, oh, a little bit below FA70. And then we have solids that would be precipitating out of that liquid. It would be at oh, about FO18 uh, or so, uh, excuse me, FA18, so about 18% phthalate. But the limit to how far the solids and liquids would evolve down these curves would be determined by the bulk composition. By the time we take our bulk composition from here to here, we go from being 100% liquid to 100% solid. So when our solids reach here, there are no more liquids left. The last little bit of liquid would be at about here. It looks like it would be at about, uh, oh, a little bit uh, more iron rich than F FA80, maybe uh, FA. Uh, phthalate 82 or 83, something like that, at a little above 1400 degrees. But the amount of that liquid is infinitesimally small. As that liquid vanishes, the system com becomes completely solid. But that's the case for equilibrium where the crystals sit around and equilibrate with the liquid. So this cup simply uh, fills up with crystalline material. But if we're pulling the crystals out of the system as soon as we create them, we can overshoot those boundaries. So if we take uh, this, these crystals here and pull them out of the system, it's as if we took a liquid that had a new bulk composition here and we just brought the brought the system here uh, as, a, as a new bulk composition. We can let this system continue, all, all, uh, this process continue. As soon as we make a little bit of crystal, we pull it out, we make some crystals, we pull them out. By the time we get down here, we haven't necessarily used up all of our uh, liquid material. Uh, it's as if we create a new liquid composition here, and we can overshoot these boundaries, making liquids that are a little more iron rich and a little more, um, and crystals that are also a little more iron rich than what we would get out of the equilibrium system. It can't overshoot forever, uh, but in, in general, the equilibrium 
process will not give us as wide a range of liquid and solid compositions as the fractional process will. So fractional crystallization, when we refer to fractional crystallization, there's some mathematics that go along with that that we'll talk about in another video. But that fractional crystallization refers to a very idealized process where the crystals are removed from the liquid as soon as the tiniest amount of crystalline material is created. So we make a crystal and we pull it out of the liquid right away. And allow, it allows us to overshoot these limits, creating liquids in this context here for the olivine binary, liquids that are more iron rich and solids that are more iron rich than what we would get out of an equilibrium crystallization system.